Howdy, Tinker Nerds. Halloween is just around the corner, and this year I wanted to do something a little bit more unique. So let's try to create a live interactive projection using completely free software. You can find links to the software and hardware used in this video at the project page below. All right, let's start tinkering. The few parts that you will need are a webcam and a projector. Practically any webcam will do, and for a projector you can get one like mine off Amazon for around $50. But if quality and realism is something that you would like to see, then you might want to invest in a more expensive one. When setting everything up, you want your webcam and your projector to be pointed in the same direction, and you want both of these to be hooked up to your computer. On the software side, you want to download the free VPT7 software, the same software that I used in my projection mapping video. This also has a free add-on called Video Trigger that you can download as well. Both of these programs should work on Windows and Mac. First, you want to start up VPT, which should add a black window to your main screen and your secondary projector screen. Click the full screen button at the bottom of the program to expand the window to fill your entire projector screen. Now on the right, you'll see a list of rows that you can add media to. I've created a Halloween media set that you can download from here so we can make a skull that follows you. To import the media, you can either drag and drop it to an empty field or you can copy it to the default project folder in the VPT7 directory. Let's start with a still image of the skull. And then let's create a new layer, call it front, and assign it to that skull image. Next, let's add the center to left video, create a new layer, and attach it to that new layer. Then add the left to center video and attach it to a new layer, the center to right video and attach it to a new layer, and the right to center video and attach it to a new layer as well. Next, let's check to see if the layers are ordered properly. One should be at the very bottom, followed by two, three, four, and five should be at the top. And that's it for the VPT setup. So now we need to activate the different layers through motion triggers. This is where the video trigger tool comes into play. So go ahead and start it up. And first you want to click on the video input settings and make sure the right camera is selected and the settings are correct. Then you can click memorize background now to freeze the view into memory. Next we need to create the first zone. The zone is the area where you want to detect motion. For instance, let's put this one on the left side of the skull. Moving anything into that zone should turn it red. Now what we want to do is have it trigger the look left video. So in the first settings row, set the zone to 1, select video from the drop down, and set it to video 2 from our VPT program. Set it to trigger this video from the beginning and have it do it when something comes in to the zone. Then we also want to have it trigger layer 2 to fade in from 0 to 1. Then on the way out, we want it to trigger the left to center video as well as fade in layer 3 from 0 to 1. And to make sure that the top layer doesn't cover up the layers before it, let's set the third layer to fade out whenever something enters the zone and set layer two to fade out whenever something exits the zone. So now we can test it and move something into the zone and the skull should look left. And when it exits the zone, the skull should look back to the center. And with that done, we next need to do zone two. So switch it on and drag a box somewhere to the right of the skull. And similar to zone 1, we want to set the zone 2 triggers so that on the way in, it triggers the center to right video, fades in layer 4, and fades out layer 5. And on the way out, we need to trigger the right to center video, fade layer 5 in, and fade layer 4 out. And to make sure layer 5 doesn't cover up our previous layers, let's set it to fade out whenever zone 1 is triggered. Now test it out again and let the creepiness ensue. But wait a second, isn't this supposed to be done at night? And most webcams can't see at night. Well, actually most of them can, but all you have to do is remove the IR filter from inside the camera. And to find out more about how to do that, you can visit this link. Feel free to use this technique to create other frightening displays or maybe even some games. 
And if you want the files for how to do those, you'll have to become a patron of my show at this link. Otherwise, if you got any value out of this show and would like to give some value back, you can become a patron as well, or you can send some bitcoins my way. All right, that's it for this episode of Tinkernut Labs. For more, go to tinkernut.com, where technology and creativity collide. And have a happy and safe Halloween.